In this video, we're going to be talking about IV, or otherwise known as current voltage graphs. What this means is that we're going to be observing how the flow of current changes in a component as we change the voltage or the potential difference. You can do this for various components, but the three main components that we're going to be looking at are the standard resistor or an ohmic conductor, the filament lamp, and the diode. So we're going to need to build a test circuit to be able to carry out our experiment. Remember, we're going to be applying different amounts of voltage to our component and seeing how the current flowing through the component changes. So right now I have my resistor in place. Attached parallel to it is a voltmeter, which is going to measure the voltage. And in series next to it is an ammeter, which will measure the current. Above I have a cell and the potential difference of this cell or the voltage of the cell is 10 volts. Now the problem here is that because this is 10 volts, that means every time 10 volts is going to pass through the component. However, I want to know how it behaves as different amounts of voltages pass through, meaning that I need to first start off with a low amount of voltage and then gradually increase that. Now you can't persuade the cell to release different amounts of voltages. So to fix this problem, what we're going to do is add one more component to our test circuit. This is a variable resistor. Now, you can think of a variable resistor as a hand gripping a pipe. So for example, 10 volts is passing through, and you can change the voltage of the variable resistor to allow certain amounts of voltage, for example, 1 volt, to pass through into the component. You can then re reduce the resistance so that instead of one volt, two volts can pass through. Eventually, you will keep on reducing its resistance until the full 10 volts can pass through to your component. So now we have our standard test circuit ready. Next, we're going to create a table and simply record voltage and current. So we're going to start the experiment and allow one voltage to pass through from the cell through to your component. So you'll see that in the, in the voltmeter, it will say 1. Then we will look at the ammeter and record the current. Once we've done that, we're going to then reduce the resistance on the, of the variable resistor so that more voltages can pass through, such as 2. Again, record the current on the ammeter. And we'll keep on doing this until we've hit the maximum amount of voltage that the cell can provide, 10 volts. And also record the current. Now, once we've got enough readings, we will then remove the resistor and flip it so that we can observe how current flows in the other direction. Now, we can, we can use the same test circuit for our two other types of components, the diode and the filament lamp. Once we've collected all of our data, we will then plot this, making sure that the current is on the y-axis and voltage is on the x-axis. And this is what the IV graph should look like for all three components. So on the left, we have the standard resistor or the ohmic conductor. In the middle, we have the filament lamp or bulb. And on the right, we have the diode. Now, you might notice that all three have unique patterns, and we're going to talk about why that is. So starting with our standard resistor, we can see that in both directions, the voltage and current are proportional. Therefore, it has a constant resistance. However, you have to make sure that the experiment has been happening at a constant temperature. Otherwise, this would change the shape of the graph. Now, you can work out resistance from the graph itself. And this is quite interesting. So if you think about this, we know that V equals IR. Now, I want to show you how to work out resistance from the graph. So let's start off by writing down V equals IR. If you rearrange that, that gives you R is V over I. Now, let's look at our graph. To find a gradient, we have to do y over x. In this case, y is current and x is the voltage. So the gradient, which we'll represent by little m, is going to be equal to y over x, or current over voltage. If I flip both sides of the equation, that gives me 1 over m is equal to v over i. 
but we just learned that v over i is equal to r so we can say that v over i equals to r therefore 1 over m 1 over the gradient is equal to r what does this mean this means that resistance is inversely proportional to the gradient in other words the steeper the line the lower the resistance so let's have a look at a question here are two IV graphs of two different standard resistors out of these two which one would you say has higher resistance so we know that resistance is 1 over the gradient which means that the resistance is inversely proportional to the gradient so when resistance is high gradient is low and vice versa so if we look at a a has a much more steeper gradient than b therefore it must have a lower resistance so a has got lower resistance b is much more flatter and therefore it has higher resistance okay moving on to our next graph this one is the filament lamp now with the filament lamp you can see that at high voltages in both directions it begins to flatten off so what does that mean remember we said that when the gradient is low the resistance becomes higher so at these areas it's quite steep in both directions so over here the gradient is quite high therefore the resistance must be low same for this area however at the ends of the graph we can see that it's beginning to flatten off so the gradient of the line is becoming smaller therefore the resistance must be increasing so why does that happen to explain that think of it like this the brighter a bulb shines the hotter it becomes so the hotter it is the higher the resistance and the reason behind that is because it's harder for the electrons to flow and finally we have the diode now with the diode you can see that here on one side it's completely flat so the gradient is completely flat so zero which means that the resistance must be very high on the other direction it's beginning to get more and more steeper therefore the resistance is beginning to reduce on the other side you can see that as voltage begins to increase the gradient becomes larger and larger and the, the line is heading upwards that means that the resistance is reducing so a diode is a component that in one direction has got a very high resistance whereas in the other direction the resistance is very low so it only allows current to flow in one direction one use of a diode is to turn an AC into a DC which means an alternating current into a direct current Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.